the Titanic was built to compete with other ships. In the early 20th century, new technology and an increasing population of European immigrants allowed Britain's largest passenger steamship lines to build the biggest and most opulent ocean liners then known. Liverpool-based Cunard launched the two fastest and sleekest liners, the Mauritania in 1906 and the Lusitania in 1907, capable of crossing the Atlantic Ocean in record time. The White Star Line, hoping to compete with its main rival, countered by ordering three massive ocean liners, the Olympic, Titanic, and Britannic. Built by the Harland and Wolf shipyard in Belfast, Ireland, now Northern Ireland, the ships were designed to be the most luxurious liners afloat. On board the RMS Titanic, the RMS stood for Royal Mail Ship, passengers could enjoy the swimming pool, squash and tennis courts, a gymnasium, sunrooms, fine dining rooms, and much more. The ship had 100 more first-class cabins than the Olympic, and a Parisian boulevard on B-deck, was added, to create the illusion of a sidewalk cafe. Ultimately, the Titanic outweighed her sister by more than 1,000 tons. Paul Orion wrote in the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution magazine Oceanus. Thomas Andrews didn't really design the Titanic. Harland and Wolf's chief naval architect Thomas Andrews played an important role in seeing the ship's construction to completion, and he was part of the design firm's guarantee group aboard the maiden voyage there to look out for and potentially address any issues, but he wasn't actually responsible for the aesthetic or practical design of the ship. By the time he became the shipyard's chief architect, construction on Titanic was already underway. Alexander Carlyle, the general manager of Harland and Wolf, claimed responsibility for the details, the decorations, the equipment, and general arrangements for the Titanic and its sister ship, the Olympic. He also said the ships were entirely designed practically by Lord Purry, his brother-in-law. The misattribution of Titanic's design comes primarily down to poetic license. When Walter Lord's book, A Night to Remember was turned into a film in the 1950s, the image of the ship's conscientious designer. Perishing as his creations sank below the icy North Atlantic proved too tempting to filmmakers, even if it meant fudging the historical facts. Everything on the Titanic was huge, except the number of lifeboats. The Titanic was not only the largest passenger ship of its time, it was the world's largest moving, man-made object. Its steel construction was held in place by 3 million rivets weighing 1,200 tons. The ship's main anchor weighed 16 tons, roughly the same as 32 concert grand pianos, while each link in the anchor chains weighed 175 pounds. 29 boilers produced enough energy to achieve 50,000 horsepower, and an average speed of 21 knots, just over 24 miles per hour. The distance between the keel, the underside of the ship, and the top of the four gigantic funnels was 175 feet. The ship measured 882.5 feet from bow to stern and 92.5 feet at its widest point. She was, in short, 11 stories high and four city blocks long. According to the British government's official inquiry, the ship carried about 1,316 passengers and 885 